Hi, and welcome to Real Recaps. Today, we shall recap a 2018 thriller science fiction movie titled The Venom. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The opening scene of the film depicts a space shuttle belonging to the Life Foundation crashing on East Malaysia. One individual, a doctor by the name of J.J. Jameson III, is the sole survivor to emerge from the wreckage alive. Jameson is placed inside an ambulance, but something strange that was attached to him suddenly comes to life, assaults the people within, and causes the ambulance to roll over and crash as a result. An emergency medical personnel identified as Michelle Lee emerges from the debris and she is the one whom the strange entity has possession of. After being possessed by the strange entity, she gets out of the crashed vehicle and heads to the crowd. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, we meet Eddie Brock, a reporter who resides in the same house as his fiancée, the attorney Ann Wang, who is going to defend the Life Foundation and its CEO, Carlton Drake. Eddie is well known for his investigative reporting on his television news show, The Eddie Brock Report, which he uses to communicate news with his audience. Eddie's supervisor, Ron Cephas Jones, assigns him the task of interviewing Drake as soon as he arrives at work. However, Jones cautions Eddie not to grill Drake with too many inquiries on Drake's job. The same question is posed by Anne, who is aware that Eddie has a short fuse and that this is one of the reasons he was forced to leave New York. Eddie discovers an email on Anne's computer that reveals the shuttle accident is suspected to have resulted in the deaths of three passengers. Eddie disobeys his orders and begins a conversation with Drake about his space travel program. But then he veers off topic and begins questioning Drake about the deaths and the ways in which he is to blame for them. The interview is cut short by Drake, which results in Eddie's supervisor dismissing him from his position. Anne subsequently finds herself unemployed, and her relationship with Eddie comes to an end. After the paramedic arrived back in Malaysia, the first thing he did was go to a local market and start eating an eel. Because of this, the vendor reprimands her, so the symbiote wraps a blade around her arm, and she subsequently slits the throat of the merchant. The people around her make an attempt to assault her as a kind of retribution, but the symbiote uses its quills to kill them all. The paramedic then approaches an elderly lady by the name of Vicky Yang. After the emergency medical technician was killed, the symbiote detached itself from him and attached itself to Vicky Yang. Six months later, Drake is still carrying on with his research on symbiotes by leveraging homeless individuals in various experiments. He uses them to test his experiment. Drake further engages in conversation with a one man by the name of Isaac Real Names Jared Bankins in a way that gives the impression that he is introducing something novel and significant for the general public's benefit. Isaac was afraid at first, but finally accepts the symbiote to take control of his body after Drake has brought it into the room where he is. Unfortunately, Isaac's body is now consumed by the symbiote and he appears to be alright for a minute, but suddenly it starts trembling and the symbiote leaves. Meanwhile, Eddie is unemployed and lives by himself in a dingy studio apartment in the Mission District of San Francisco. He walks to a local supermarket where his friend Mrs. Chen is the cashier. Eddie is aware that a thief named Sam Medina has been taking her money on a consistent basis, but he is unable to stop him. After that, a scientist from the Life Foundation named Dr. Dora Skirth, played by Jenny Slate, who is appalled by Drake's experiments on humans, has a conversation with Eddie. She asks Eddie to assist her in determining who Drake is, but he is unwilling to do so since he is no longer concerned about the welfare of other people. Eddie goes to Anne's apartment in an effort to pay her a visit, but she has just returned from a date with her new lover, Dr. Dan Lewis, and he is waiting for her there. Eddie expresses his need for Anne and his belief that Drake is to blame for what transpired between them. Nevertheless, Anne reminds Eddie that he is the one who started everything as he should be held for their current predicament. Later on, Eddie gives Skirth a call to seek for her assistance with the assignment that she is currently working on. Eddie is brought to the main headquarters of the Life Foundation by Skirth, who brings him there under cover of darkness. Eddie documents the gruesome manner in which the symbiote parades around its victims by taking photographs. He comes across many people dead and still alive. Maria, a homeless lady, is one of them fights him when he is attempting to free her from the jail where she is currently being held. After being grabbed by the symbiote that was inhabiting her body, Eddie managed to escape but he is now the current host of the symbiote. Well, I guess the hunter is now being hunted. Eddie is being pursued by security officers, but he appears to be more robust and nimble, so he is able to evade capture and escape. After discovering Maria's dead body, Drake and his team come to the conclusion that a symbiote specimen is now on the loose. 
After Drake manipulates Skirth into saying that Eddie was complicit in the crime, he locks Skirth up so that another symbiote may murder her. After that, Drake dispatches a team of hired assassins commanded by Roland Treese to track down and kill Eddie. Eddie begins to have some peculiar symptoms. He feels as though he has a fever and craves odd foods, such as frozen tater tots and meat that has gone bad. He also wants to consume bizarre items. In addition to this, he starts to pick up on a deep growling voice that is speaking to him. When he discovers Anne and Dan on a date, he demonstrates how insane he is by eating other people's meals and then sitting in a lobster tank to eat live lobsters. After that, he shows Anne and Dan his lobster tank. Anne and Dan come to the conclusion that they need to assist Eddie. Dan performs an MRI on Eddie, but the frequency of the test causes Eddie to experience a peculiar kind of pain in his brain. After the MRI scan, all results were negative. Eddie is now released and asked to go back home and take a deep rest much as Eddie is in total disagreement with them. Back at Drake's office, he holds an intensive survey to find out why the parasite isn't displaying the desired behavior according to Drake. On Eddie's way home, the parasite starts giving him a hard time. On a call to Anne, he reveals that he's been hearing voices. Even during the call, Eddie is experiencing pain once more at his house as a result of his neighbor who plays very loud music. Eddie then attempts to persuade him to tone it down, but instead of listening to him, he laughs at him until the symbiote transforms Eddie's face into something terrifying. Immediately, the neighbor gives their assent. After some time had passed, Treese and his men burst into Eddie's home in an attempt to retrieve him. Eddie makes several attempts to surrender, but the symbiote has little interest in doing so. With the assistance of the symbiote, Eddie must put up a fight against the mercenaries as they close in on him. He beats up all of them in a very short time. This is something that Treese records to play for Drake, who is taken aback by the fact that Eddie is a good host for the symbiote. After that, Eddie flees from his flat just as further mercenaries arrive. While Eddie is looking for a motorbike in the city, he is being pursued by many officers. It is much simpler for him to kill the evil people and navigate the streets thanks to the symbiote, up to the point that Trees collides with Eddie with his car. As Eddie and the officers race in the city, he keeps flipping from himself to the venom and he keeps dodging them until he was hit by a vehicle and after a short time, Eddie is transformed into venom as the alien symbiote gradually takes over his entire. Venom takes some bullets from another mercenary before he can murder Trees. The man's head is bitten off by Venom, and it then flees the scene. Eddie finds himself in the area of a lighthouse, and it is there that his fractured bones begin to mend. Even though Eddie is horrified to watch a man's head get bit off, the symbiote, Venom communicates with Eddie and informs him that he is a superb host. Eddie is told by Venom that if he wants to keep living, he must do what Venom orders him to do. Eddie, now assuming the identity of Venom, ascends to the highest point of his former office in order to present his former employer with evidence of Drake's criminal activities. When the symbiote's frequency is thrown off by the frequency of a passing jet, Eddie nearly falls off the roof, but Venom catches him just in time to save him from hitting the earth. After destroying the evidence, Eddie makes another attempt to flee, but the mercenaries pursue him. Eddie, now the powerful Venom engages in combat with them and killed quite a lot of them before fleeing the scene. When Anne stops by Eddie's flat and discovers that there is a murder scene, Eddie in his normal form runs to Anna and tells her that he is the one. He asks her not to be afraid. She brings Eddie to Dan's office so that he might receive further assistance there. She is aware that Eddie isn't in very good shape. Eddie is urged by Venom to initiate conversation with Anne since Venom has developed a crush on her. Eddie makes an effort to apologize to Anne for his actions, but Anne informs him that now is not the appropriate moment. Dan decides to do one more test on Eddie, and the results reveal that the symbiote is actually a parasite. Anne activates a high frequency, which causes the symbiote to detach from Eddie's body shortly after Dan informs Eddie that he and the symbiote are essentially using each other's life force to sustain themselves. As soon as Eddie goes, poison begins to pour out of the vents, and the man clutches to a little dog for protection. Then, Teresa's men at last succeeded in capturing Eddie, and they brought him to Drake. In the meantime, the older woman from earlier visits an airport in search of a little girl to recruit as a new host for the symbiote. The girl travels to San Francisco in search of Drake and does so. After that, the symbiote takes control of Drake's body. Drake grills Eddie with several inquiries on the location of the symbiote. The symbiote that inhabits Drake takes the shape of a shell and gives itself the name Riot. Eddie discovers that Drake intends to travel out into space in search of other symbiotes to bring back to Earth and utilize people as hosts for an order for them to be able to use. After Anne locates the dog that is acting as Venom's host, she brings Venom to the Life Foundation. 
When Anne tries to save Eddie from Treese, she inadvertently terrifies herself by biting off his head. Then, after a passionate kiss, she returns Eddie's venom to him. Eddie and Venom get off the rocket in order to track down Drake and Riot before they board the rocket. While both men are in their symbiote forms, fighting one other, and switches on a frequency that causes them to get confused and causes the symbiotes to leave their hosts. Eddie forces Drake to fall over the ledge when the former makes an attempt to go back up there after seeing Riot. Riot stabs Eddie as he turns around, and then Riot hops on the rocket as it is beginning to lift off. Eddie dies as a result of the attack. When Venom finally locates Eddie and climbs back on him, the wound that he sustained from being pinned to an item is cured. After that, Drake and Riot hop aboard the rocket just as Venom cuts the fuel line. This results in the rocket exploding, setting Drake and Riot ablaze as well as the rest of the crew. As Eddie is carried away by the current, it appears as though Venom has passed away because to the flames that are produced by the rocket. It would appear that Eddie and Anne had reconciled their differences at some time in the future. He claims that he was requested to come back as program and make a show on Drake, but he already has arrangements to see someone who is incarcerated so he cannot do so. It has come to light that Eddie is concealing the fact that he still harbors venom within him for man. After leaving, Eddie encounters an elderly character, portrayed by Stan Lee, who encourages him to keep fighting for the things he cares about. Another thing that Venom has his sights set on is the man's dog. Eddie wanders about with Venom and attempts to explain to him that if they are going to stay together, he can't just devour everyone he wants, and that they can only go after the truly evil individuals. Venom does not understand what Eddie is trying to say to him, but Eddie persists in his efforts. The same bandit approaches Mrs. Chen's business once more in an attempt to extort money from her as he enters. Eddie transforms into Venom and defeats the antagonist in front of Mrs. Chen by eating him. Eddie inquires as to what they should do next, and Venom responds by stating that they are free to act in any way that they see fit. Eddie travels to San Quentin Prison in order to have an interview with his most recent subject, a serial murderer by the name of Cletus Cassidy. Cassidy predicts that there will be carnage when he finally breaks out. Post credits, the trailer for the upcoming animated film Spider-Man, Into the Spider-Verse is presented, along with a lengthier clip from the film. Miles Morales, whose character is portrayed by Shamik Moore, is being pursued by the Prowler in it. After he has successfully evaded the bad guy, Miles pays his respects at the tomb of Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Peter, who for some inexplicable reason is still alive, suddenly materializes behind Miles not long after that. On the other hand, Miles accidentally zaps Peter, which knocks him unconscious. After that, the cops begin to pursue Miles as he is dragging Peter behind him with a web. They come to a halt when they get knocked down in the midst of a crowded street in New York. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked the movie. Please like, comment with your favorite part of the movie and subscribe to see more films like this and I shall see you in the next film. Take care. Peace.